Now, Greg, you had a very illustrious, amazing career. You uncovered a lot of stories, and I was wondering, throughout your career, what is one story that sticks out to you that you're most proudest of breaking? Wow. Uh, I would say that I'm, you know, the, the story that was the most difficult and the most heartbreaking is I uncovered that George Bush was involved in a gold mining company, Barrick Gold. And that gold mining company, to seize control of a gold mine in Africa, rolled bulldozers over the property to get rid of the small scale miners that were there. But those miners are still in their mines. George Bush's company and Barrick Gold Mining buried alive 50 people. I covered that story, to, and that was tremendously dangerous, but mainly for my sources. Uh, one was charged with sedition, others are beat up, others have disappeared. It is, and it has been totally crushed in the United States and in Europe. This is, this is the most harrowing story that I've uncovered. I've uncovered a lot of, you know, important stuff. I don't want to dismiss things like I found the inside documents for uh, the plans for the oil fields of Iraq before the invasion by uh, George Bush. I uncovered how Katherine Harris stole the election by wiping out black people off the voter rolls. Um, you know, I just, I uncovered how BP had a blowout and that was another story I'm very proud of that didn't, that got really no coverage, got crushed in the United States. I put it on top of the BBC news, which is that 17 months before the Deepwater Horizon blowout, BP had a similar blowout for the same reason on another offshore rig in the Central uh, Asian Republic of Azerbaijan. But they were able to cover it up through bribery and threats and everything else, and the U.S. media would not touch that story. BP knew that they said they were shocked when their cement failed and the rig blew up and 11 people died and the coast of the Gulf Coast was destroyed. They said they were shocked. This had never happened. That's a complete absolute lie and uncover I got arrested in Azerbaijan wow. trying to cover that story so I mean I've had a lot of very important stories uh, I would say that the burying those miners alive with George Bush's gold mine company that was the most harrowing story and I was threatened my guardian was sued I was threatened with lawsuits and ruin um, and of course my sources were uh, charged with uh, crimes they could have been hung it was really grim. I think what you're doing is extremely important because you're covering news that the mainstream media won't touch or, or doesn't even have access to or even want to get near. And I was always wondering from just watching it and observing it, how is it possible to find all these stories that nobody else is talking about? Do you have any tips and recommendations for the citizen journalists out there? Yeah. Well, the great journalist, Yogi Berra, said, it's amazing what you can see when you're looking. And that's the trick. You have to open your goddamn eyes. And you have to start go stop going to those fucking press conferences and rewriting press releases. We don't have reporters in America. We have repeaters. They go to those presidential press conferences, Obama said today, and, you know, like, who cares? Who cares? They get the official news, the talking points. It makes me puke. It's the, you know, the horse race. Oh, Hillary Clinton has a new pants suit and a new hairstyle. You know what? I don't give a fuck about Hillary's hairstyle, okay? That's how it is. I don't care. I don't want to know, all right? What I do want to know is, is, uh, is, you know, was there another blowout in a, in, uh, of an offshore oil rig before BP's Deepwater Horizon blowout? And there was. That's the stuff I'm going after. And you know what? They don't want to do that because they don't want to spend the money. They don't want to take the time. It's risky. You get sued. You get threatened by suits. I mean, you know, the New York Times would not touch the Barrick Gold story because they said, we'll get sued, but we'll, they have the same lawyer I did, Floyd Abrams. And he said, Times won't touch it because you got sued, they'll get sued, they'll spend a half a million dollars winning the suit, but you know, they'll get scared off by it. So corporations are allowed to censor this crap. You know, so that would be, you know, the, you, know you gotta stop repeating. And so therefore, I, you know, when you talk about citizen journalists, that's the only journalists. There are citizen journalists, and then there are corporate journalists. And I don't know of any, any corporate journalist which is producing anything. You know, Cy Hirsch, uh, who uncovered the MLI massacre with my friend Ron Ridenour, he was fired by the New York Times. 
Um, you know, the great journalists do not survive in, in U.S. news. So one of the things, one of my first recommendations is, you want to be a journalist? Don't go to fucking journalism school, okay, where they pull your brains out, where they hypnotize you and tell you to bleach your teeth and, re and, and write in a reverse pyramid style. Okay, so screw that. Second, avoid taking jobs from these, from these motherfuckers. Stay off their fucking payrolls. In other words, if you want, look, if you're going to work for the Times, you got to toe the line. If Seymour Hersh got fired, you'd get fired too. Uh, Dan Rather finally, for one minute in his life, repeated one of my stories that George Bush weaseled out of the war in Vietnam because his daddy got him into the Texas Air Guard. The one real story that Dan Rather did in his entire career, and he gets fired. Now, he's worth a quarter billion to CBS. So you're never going to be able to do real stories if you work for these for these crap holes. I mean, if you're gonna work for Izvestia and Pravda, you're never gonna do uh, any real journalism. It does not exist, I haven't seen it. There are good journalists in these places, but they are never assigned to do any real stories and because it costs, it also costs too much. All the journalism there is is citizen journalism. There is nothing else. And I gotta tell you, I did not start out as a journalist. I certainly didn't go to goddamn journalism school. I was an investigator, and then I moved to investigative reporting when I found out that the American news media would not, would not cover the real news. And then if I wanted to work, I had to uncover real news. I had to go to England, where I immediately got uh, work uh, as an investigative reporter with The Guardian and with BBC Television and Channel 4 and other British outlets. And, you know, I, you know, here I am, I work, you know, you'll see me on RT, you'll see me on Al Jazeera, you'll see me on BBC television and ITV and, and Canadian broadcasting in America. I'm persona non grata. I totally understand how that feels. I personally went to journalism school for a I couple thought... semesters, and then I did what you said and said, fuck it, I'm not doing this shit because it's a waste of my time. And I definitely went independent, and it's a lot freer, and I definitely don't want to work for any other news company. Definitely good tips. Anything else you'd like to say or any last tips and recommendations for any other journalists out there? Yeah, well, you're not going to, um, you know, you want to be a journalist. First of all, you have to see journalism. So go to gregpalace.com and see what it looks like, the real stuff. And also, if you have the guts for it, and if you don't mind too much sex violence and, and senseless drinking, uh, read my book about life as a journalist called Vulture's Picnic. Uh, that's my book about being a journalist and what, what it takes. <laughs> and and not, only, not only how, you know, I always have great stories, but how many stories I just blew away because I just screwed them up. And you have to be willing to, to take that chance. And learn from your mistakes. Check out gregpalace.com. Greg, thank you so much for all your work. You're Keep it up. Welcome. Really appreciate it. Great stuff. Is secure. Is there a way to keep our information away from the grubby hands of the government? To find out, I talked to my friend, also fellow journalist and techie, Tim Poole. That's why I would like to see you, my dear Luke, in the United States Congress making public policy. I don't know if that could happen. Yes, it can I don't happen. Know if that's possible. Yes, it can happen, and it's possible. Everything 